Hello, boys and girls. Mrs. Lewis here, and I'm going to read you a really cute book called I Need My Monster, written by Amanda Knoll and illustrated by Howard McWilliam. And there's the little boy on our title page, and it looks like he's drawing his monster. And here he is in his bedroom. Look, I see this paper up here on his wall. It says Ethan's room. So I guess our friend in our story's name is Ethan. And it says, tonight when I looked under the bed for my monster, I found this note instead. Gone fishing, back in a week, Gabe. I guess Gabe is the name of his monster. What do you think? What was I going to do? I needed a monster under my bed. How was I supposed to get to sleep if my monster was gone? Ooh, I'm not sure I would want to sleep with a monster in my room. I tried to sleep, but it wasn't the same without Gabe. I missed his ragged breathing. <sighs> His nose whistling, <laughs> the scrabbling of his claws. How would I ever get to sleep without Gabe? And look, he's just staring up at the ceiling. It was no use. Gabe would be gone for a week, and I just had to have a monster. I climbed quickly out of bed so my parents wouldn't hear me. Grown-ups have some very strange ideas about monsters under beds. I knocked on the floorboards and then scrambled back underneath my covers. I waited nervously. Would a new monster appear? What would he be like? Would his snorting be as cheerful as Gabe's? So what do you think? Do you think he's going to get a new monster? Can I see? Can you see up underneath that bed? Do you see anything coming yet? Hmm. Let's turn the page and see what happens. When I heard some creaking under my bed, I knew that the substitute monster had arrived. Oh, I see him. There he is. There's his substitute monster. Good evening, said a low, breathy voice. My name is Herbert, and I will be your monster for the evening. Herbert? What kind of name is that for a monster? You don't sound scary at all. Have you ever scared a kid before? Well, no, but I have read all the best books on the topic. Do you have long teeth and scratchy claws? I asked. No, but I have an overbite, and I'm a mouth breather. Listen. <sighs> Herbert's panting was kind of scary, but it wasn't enough for me. There he is. Look at his mustache. Oh, I love the mustache on that monster. Listen, Herbert, I'm sorry. I just don't think this is going to work. It's nothing personal, but I really need a monster with claws. Picky, picky, Herbert complained. As you wish. I'll go. There was some more creaking. Then Herbert was gone. So, are we going to get another Herbert, or are we going to get a different kind of a monster? What do you suppose is going to happen? I don't want. To, I wouldn't want something too scary. Hmm. Let's go find out. Some scratching warned me that a second monster had appeared. Good evening, he said in a high, silky voice. My name is Ralph. I understand you need a monster with claws. If you would please lean over, 
I will hold out an arm for inspection. I crouched on the edge of the bed, hoping to see a horrible shaggy arm with sharp, ragged nails. Oh, look, I see some eyes down here under his bed. And they're in pairs. And if the eyes are in pairs, we can count by twos. Let's count by twos and see how many eyes this monster has. Ready? Here's one, two, four, six. He's got six eyes. Wonder if he has those claws that that Ethan's looking for. Instead, I was surprised to see sleekly brushed fur with smooth, shiny claws. Excuse me, I don't mean to be rude, I asked, but is that nail polish on your claws? Yes, it is, Ralph replied. I believe professional monsters should always be well-groomed. I could tell this was not going to work either. I'm sorry to disappoint you, Ralph, but I need a monster with scary claws. Like Gabe's, I thought. Ah, He's thinking about his monster. How do you suppose he feels right now? I bet he feels sad. Did you think he felt sad too? He misses Gabe. A minute later, a third voice from under the bed rasped. Check out these claws, kid. I gathered my courage and peered over the edge. The claws were impressive. Jagged and dark and razor sharp. So far, so good. I was a, ner a little nervous. Could you stick out your tail, I whispered. Sure, but don't get scared. Hmm. Oh, <laughs> I wouldn't be scared about that tail. I peeked through my, my, I can't read that word, folks. I'm going to say my lashes. I, oh, my fingers. This is so tiny, and it looks like they forgot some words in our book right here. Can you see that? They forgot the F and the I. I peeked through my fingers at the slime, slimy tail slithering over the foot of my bed. Um, and that's when I noticed the bow. Look, this pink bow. Are you a girl monster? Of course I am, she snapped. I'm Cynthia. Do you have a problem with that? Mm, yeah, I do, I admitted. I definitely need a boy monster. Boy monsters are for boys, and girl monsters are for girls. Everybody knows that. Well, aren't you a picky one, she sniffed, and then she was gone. And that's the end of our story today. Do you think that Ethan is going to find his perfect monster when it, with all these substitutes that keep coming? Or do you think that he is just going to have to hold out for Gabe and wait for Gabe to come back? You're going to have to come back tomorrow and find out.